can't preview. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull the graphic up. But uh, this this is his five. He has uh, Jameson Williams, Jack Campbell, Afatu Melifanbu, Josh Pascal, and Sione Vaki. We can read what we can read what he says. Um, if you're if you want to, uh, uh, Tyler. But like out of that list, just what I'd mentioned right there. What player are you really interested in in training camp? Honestly, it's like this is a really good top five X Factor list. Um, I don't know if necessarily Jack Campbell would be a pick for me just because I am expecting good things out of Jack Campbell. I don't know if it's, right. I mean, yeah, I guess it's an X Factor in a way, but I'm expecting him to take that big leap. So I'm not, it's not total X Factor on me in terms of, of, of that. I guess I'm looking at more of like surprise candidates and someone who small to make. Um, I am curious about. Josh Pascal, I know me and you have talked about him in great lengths the last three years um, about, you know, his potential and where he kind of fits on that defensive line with his versatility. Um, and I also was going to bring up later uh, when we talk about some of our position battles, talk about um, Vaki and how that like running back three situation really ends up shaping up because, you know, that's a guy who's just a straight up football player, man, with the new special teams rules, with the new kickoff rules implemented. Um, and then just the way he kind of plays football and, and is just a, a straight up football player, man. He's a dog. So, um, yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. And I think those little things, as you look at championship caliber teams, those little things are the things that you start to notice, like defensive line depth, running back depth, um, you know, obviously receiver depth. Like there's we've got our cornerstones. We don't have to search for those anymore. Now we're looking for those complementary key depth pieces that can really take us over the hump. So. Um, I don't I don't mind the list at all. Um, and like I said, you know, a couple that I would take away from that would really probably be more like Josh Pascal and uh, and Baki. So that's kind of where I would I would see what yeah. those could be potential X factors. I agree with you as well. Um, you know, I like Pascal. I think that this is a year that if Pascal is going to get going, this is the year that he's going to do it. Um, obviously, with the Lions getting Terrell Williams, the defensive line coach that was a game changer honestly it was i know titans fans I, i'm in some of their groups because i do follow the titans because they're my southern team but they were pissed off that they lost terrell williams because of what terrell williams did for jeffrey simmons what he did for kyle Pecco, what he did for harold landry bud dupree all the guys like they had a good pass rush while they didn't have a really good secondary their secondary was total ass they had a good pass rush and I look at this this Detroit Lions team, and I look at the defensive end. And I go, okay, who's on the opposite side of Hutch? Who's gonna who's gonna stake that claim? Number one, who's gonna stake that claim? Is it gonna be Davenport who can't stay healthy? Is it gonna be James Houston who is a little bit of a tweener? Is it gonna be Matthew Betts who is a kind of like a unknown? Or is it gonna be Josh Pascal who was a second round pick and you drafted him to be a guy that you could rely on? Because honestly. I don't need a guy on the opposite side of Hutch that's going to be like, like otherworldly. All I need him to be is average. If he's average, we're going to be fine. Because if you look at the defensive tackle, like the, the room in the defensive tackle, this is a loaded room too. You got DJ Reader, Broderick Martin, Makai Wingo, who could also play edge. That's an X factor that people are kind of missing. Uh, Ali McNeil, Levi Anzarike, who this is a this is a make or break for Anzarike if we're going to be totally honest with each other. Chris Smith, Kyle Pecco. So you look at it, this defensive line room, defensive tackle is really leading the charge. I think defensive tackle is going to be a strong point in this front seven. If you think about it, like from a pragmatic standpoint, Lee McNeil was electric last year. Having a guy like DJ Reader on his side is going to help him out. Uh, DJ Reader being on the opposite side of Hutch and Lee. You assume Liam's going to be on the same side as Hutch and then DJ Reader will be on the opposite side. That's going to open up plays for whoever the defensive end that stakes their claim. So this is a team that – this is a defense that's got a lot better. I I saw Warren Sharp. He does a lot of analytics or whatever. He thinks Detroit's like one of the top defensive uh, – top front, front sevens. I'm trying to remember what it was. But that's what it was. So he thinks they're top five, the top five front seven. So – Look, Josh Pascal is going to need to come out. Uh, he does. Uh, Nolan does say this about uh, Pascal. He says Pascal's injury history caused him to get a slow start in the Lions' career, but toward the end of the season and before he just at the beginning of the year, 
Pascal showed flashes of why the Lions drafted him with a second-round pick in 2022. After his two seasons, there's some belief that Pascal has a better chance of making contributions inside, but he was drafted He was drafted as an edge rusher, and that is, in fact, where he played a majority of the snaps last season. With edge Marcus Davenport and defensive tackle uh, DJ Reader both starting training camp on the injury list, Pascal will have plenty of opportunity to show what he could do along the offensive line. It also doesn't hurt that this offseason off hired one of the many to believe one of the best defensive line coaches in the NFL in Terrell Williams. That's what I'm saying. They got it. They got a good guy, and Terrell Williams is really gonna. If Terrell, if if Josh Pascal can't get it now, he never gets it. If Levi Enrique can't get it with Terrell Williams, he'll never get it. That's the way it's gonna go. So, that's my opinion. And Sione Vaki, it's an interesting dynamic that they have here because of his ability to play running back, because of his ability to play receiver, because of his ability to play safety. This is a total wild card in terms of roster management. Like this guy can take a spot of a safety and then you could, you can keep another position that you really think that you're strong in. Uh, you know, he can play receiver, so you could use him as a receiver. He can play running back. I I'm already seeing people penciling him into the running back room. And if you look at the running back room, this is interesting, Tyler, because if you look at this running back room, it is stacked. I mean, obviously, you got Dave Montgomery, you got Jameer Gibbs that are going to be your one, two. Fine. You're probably only, only going to keep four running backs. So you got Craig Reynolds, Zodiman Knight, and Jamar Jefferson, and Jake Funk that are going to battle it out for the last spot. Obviously, Craig Reynolds could get the inside nod. Zodiman Knight has some ability too. I think Jake Funk and Jamar Jefferson are a little bit outside of this. But this is another area that you have that is has a lot of depth. So that's what I, I see. And I like Nolan's list a lot. I think that he really nailed it with the Pascal, the Mel Fonwu, the Campbell, uh, and the J- Jameson Williams. I think Jameson Williams, this is going to be a great uh, training camp for him because yeah. he's finally going to get the show out. No, absolutely. And, um, and, and what that does, too, is it shows, you know, um, what we're kind of trying to accomplish, especially like if he, because the first couple of years, if he didn't really contribute, but like, did he necessarily have a chance to contribute? You know, he was buried in the depth chart. He was going between corner and safety. He never yep. really had a great like foundation, whether that be coaching or scheme, or just, it just seemed like he was kind of a misfit toy. And, yep. you know, we all of a sudden, we seen him last year, get some reps at safety and in the right scheme and where Aaron Glenn was starting to figure it out. And the guy just absolutely balled out. So it's like if you can get, I'll even say a half a season of the iffy we saw last year, I mean, that's great. You know, that's great for our secondary. That's great for our versatility. That's great for our team because what it does is it uh, it kind of gives us that mix between, say, like a Tracy Walker and a Kirby Joseph. You know, he's got some hard hitting, but he also has a little bit of that ball hawking ability and just, you know, the ability to find the ball. Uh, and so, like, losing a guy like Tracy, well – and I and I think that that hurts a little less because Tracy got hurt and we kind of saw him get diminished from the defense. So, but the initial idea at first was like, oh my gosh, we got to you know we got to resign Tracy, we got to resign Tracy. We need that you know hard hitting, um, you know run stopping safety. So the fact that if he is kind of turned into this little bit of a hybrid, a little bit of both, and he's able to come in there and actually contribute, you know, then you're talking about if he and um, Brian Branch and Kirby Joseph. And, you know, and player to be named, you know, rotating in that secondary. And then all of a sudden now, you know, now you're you're cooking with gas and now you're, you have something that you can kind of like balance your defense with. So um, especially with all these new guys at corner, I mean, you need, you know, you need these guys to be able to be the quarterback and be the captain of your secondary. Um, so, you know, that'll be really big for us. And, and then, you know, guys like Carlton Davis being, you know, pretty much the only vet in that quarter, cornerback room. Him having that uh, that communication with our safeties uh, in that defensive backfield is going to be huge, especially for those new guys, those rookies coming in and trying to learn. So um, it'll be interesting, man. But you you need you need strong play from your safeties. Uh, and like I said, I think it, we're seeing if he be what we thought and hoped he would be when he got drafted. And I just hope that he keeps it up and he's able to kind of sustain that play. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And I mean, we're going to get into our my, our top five. I'll get, let you go first. But uh, 
I think you're right. I do think that like this list that Nolan has is pretty well put together. I think that there you can make the case for other players, which I th- assume we will. Um, potential X factors in training camp. Um, but I look at this list and I go, it's a make or break it year for Pascal. It's another year for a Fatu Melifon would show off. Where's Jack Campbell and his development as a linebacker? Is he better in the pass coverage? And then I look at J-Mo and I go, okay, I saw what I needed to see late in the playoffs, late in the year, when you finally got some chemistry with Jared Goff. What I really want to see is I want to see you become the full spectrum of what we expect Jameson Williams to be. Because I think if he becomes what we think he can be, me and you have talked about it before, it unlocks the offense. Now you got J-Mo, I mean, you got J-Mo running down the field. You got Laporta going up the middle. You got St. Brown going up the middle. Like, you got Jameer Gibbs coming out of the backfield. Dave Montgomery coming out of the backfield. Like, this, it opens up so many avenues for the team. So, J-Mo being good is going to help us, uh, help the Lions. And then if J-Mo is something that we, me and you kind of expect, we're going to be in a really good situation. Definitely.